So today we're going to talk about software. And you may be kind of confused by what's on my screen, but let's go with it. So what do you do when you want to mow a lawn, for example? Nowadays, you get out the mower, fill it with gas, or maybe you even already have one filled with gas that you ride. And you go out and you use that, right? Back in the day, you used something called a scythe. And so what this does is it's effectively a giant blade that you swung around by hand. And for mowing lawns, you didn't even uh, you didn't even allow it to touch the air. You had to have it touch the ground, have it angled at it, and you would spin it around in circles as fast as you could, and then hope that the edge of the blade was, that touched the grass and cut it was high enough because you actually let this part here touch the ground. The important thing about this is that there are multiple ways to do different things. You can either get a perfectly trimmed lawn of using a mechanically balanced lawn mower blade that has been etched and carved and then strengthened. Or you could literally just take a whetstone like this guy did and swing a blade around a few times. This is critical because I am recognizing that as I look more and more into doing startups, a lot of the enterprise level education that I was given through my many years of software development. How can I say this? It feels like there's a lot of extra added process and things for good reason. It's best practice. And it's definitely something that should be done if you can afford it. But if you don't have a lawnmower, and you still need to get the lawn done, maybe you can use a scythe instead. And so one of the things that you should understand as an engineer is sometimes you don't have access to that wheel, that uh, lawnmower, but you should always plan on being able to do the job right. It's not just about using the scythe to mow the lawn and be done. Maybe you need to do that to get rid of some, you know, overgrowth or something, but then you have to go over it again with an actual lawnmower and do the job the right the next time. It's always best to do the job right the first time, but sometimes you're just not able to. And in those rare exceptions, you should mark everything and come back to it later and actually have that in the plan to do so. This is something that I'm having to kind of force myself to accept because I would rather do it right the first time. I would rather pull out the riding lawnmower, get it done, and be done in a few minutes and go back to do other stuff. But I don't have a lawnmower for the task I'm working on right now. And so I have to get out the scythe. And uh, I haven't used the scythe in a while. But I do know how to use one because I have learned how to use one. And this is the this is the big issue here is as an engineer, you're going to want to skip to using the biggest, fanciest tool. Well, how are you going to use a scythe when you need to if, if that's all you've ever done? If all you've ever done is use a riding lawnmower, how are you going to use a knife to cut your lawn? Now, you might ask yourself, well, I'm not because... Using a knife to cut my lawn is stupid. Well, what if that's the only thing you have? And what if that's the thing that keeps the dang company in business until you can save up enough money to upgrade to a lawnmower? These are the questions a lot of engineers don't ask themselves. We get, I don't want to say coddled, and I don't want to say, get, uh, say spoiled. What I will say is that we get used to using the biggest, fanciest, shiniest tools. And because of that, we don't have as much experience in lesser tools. And so one of the things that I have intentionally done throughout my entire career, starting with punch cards and moving myself up to, you know, Kubernetes clusters and all that fun stuff, is I've taken great care to use every single level of the system and to use every iteration of the tools, not just so I can understand them and use them when I need to, 
but also so I can understand why the next version of the tool exists. Looking at my screen right now, the first few seconds of this video, you probably didn't understand why I had this on my screen. But now you might be thinking to yourself, it makes more sense. This is exactly the way of thinking that you need as an engineer. Okay. I know I don't want to have to use a scythe to mow my lawn. Swinging a giant blade around is not my definition of fun unless I'm playing a video game and definitely don't want to be cutting grass. But Hey, if I have to throw a lawn party and uh, I'm trying to impress somebody and all I have is that, guess what? That's what I got to do. Now, that's hypothetical, obviously. I'm speaking in euphemisms for this. But the important thing here is that you understand not only the tool and how to use it, but why you have to use the tool. I can use GitOps and I can use, you know, Open Tofu or ansible or, or whatever you know and i can i can go out there and i can run the the command to deploy a new instance of my environment and update the dns because i've got everything checked in and everything's in docker compose and do all those things but why are you using those big complement complicated kubernetes clusters what makes them valuable what adds the complexity that adds the value versus something that just adds complexity. Because at the end of the day, if you're just adding complexity, you're just adding cost. Think critically about the value of the tools and what they provide you as an engineer. Don't just reach for the biggest, fanciest, shiniest lawnmower that you can ride. Instead, Look at what can minimally be done to look at, do the job, such as a scythe, and then update based on what you actually have available. For example, if you're in North America, you probably have easier access to a lawnmower than you do a scythe. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense for you to use a scythe unless you're doing some sort of bespoke thing. So, yeah, use a lawnmower. It's fine may not even need to use a riding lawnmower. Maybe you can just push it a few minutes and be done. It takes like 15 minutes. You're done. But the important thing there is that you understand why you're doing it and why you're using the tool that you're using. I've seen so many, so many engineers get caught up in the shiny nature of new tools. And to be honest, I fired a lot of engineers that got so lost in the use of new shiny tools that they forgot to provide business value. And so when you think about this, think about what the actual North Star goal is. How does the tool you're using help you accomplish that? But most importantly, why is that tool the wrong tool for the job? If you can make up a giant list of why it's bad, but it's still the least bad tool out of everything else, then you should use that tool. But you shouldn't use a tool just because it has a long list of good things either. Keep this in mind. 